My name is Ryan Page, and I'm an application specialist for Techless Structures. Today in this video, we're going to be discussing the topic of slope slabs in Techless Structures, and we'll be covering basic workflows to create top face slopes to a central point or an off-centered point. We'll be using examples such as a pipe penetration for drainage, as well as a 2 inch deep rectangular recess. Specifically, some of the points we are going to cover are creation of concrete slabs, converting a concrete part into an item, editing an item's geometry using direct modification, using cutting tools from the edit ribbon, such as polygon cut or part cut, to add recesses or penetrations to concrete. Let's start with sloping to a central drainage point. Before we begin, we need to ensure that direct modification is turned on, as we will require the ability to modify our objects directly. To slope the face of a slab, we will need to convert our slab part into an item, and therefore we can edit its geometry using handles and edges. So to begin, let's create a 10 foot square slab that is 12 inches thick. In the properties, let's also give it a name of sloped slab drain or something similar that is unique. Now, we will need to convert the slab, which is a part, into an item, which is traditionally just a static piece of geometry. We will, however, have the ability to modify the item using direct modification, and it will give us some flexibility that we do not normally have with parts. To convert the part, simply select it, right-click, and then at the bottom select Convert Part to Item. A warning dialog will pop up stating some side effects of converting. In this case, we have not populated any UDAs and we do not need to worry about the warning and can click OK. However, it is good to keep in mind for future tasks in case you've already populated additional information on parts you are about to convert. Now that the slab is an item, we will adjust its class for visual purposes and we can move on to editing the geometry. Editing geometry is straightforward when selecting an item and having direct modification turned on. The Geometry Editing ribbon will appear in the top right tool ribbons. We can turn the handles of an object on for use in editing. We can add edges to help create new contours. We can also add points to help create new contours. And finally, we can save our object. It is important to note that all changes we are about to make are temporary and we will have to save our shape once we are done. If we turn on the handles, you can see we are able to drag them and snap to a distance to change the geometry. So creating a single slope to one side is pretty simple. However, if we want to slope to a center point, we will need to add additional edges in order to change the top surface geometry. Let's click the Edge button in the top right ribbon, and then we are going to create a line going diagonally from one corner to the other. We will need to do this for the opposite corners as well. However, if we try to go straight across like we just did previously, you will see our guideline is red and will not allow us to actually click the second point. Instead, what we need to do is go from one corner to the midpoint of the edge we had just previously created. We can then repeat this for the other side. Now let's go ahead and turn on handles again. You'll notice there is a fifth handle in the center in which we can drag downward and snap to a distance, or begin to drag downward and key in a specific distance that we require. Once we have done so, only the top surface of our slab is sloped downward and to the center. And we can verify this visually by quickly using a cut plane. Before we proceed to add our drain, let's save our edited item. Select the slab and then the top right ribbon click Save As. You can save using the current shape and name, or you can provide a new name and save as a new shape in the Shape Catalog. If we open the Shape Catalog by selecting the slab and then clicking the ellipsis or three dot button next to the Shape field, we can see a series of temporary shapes that were created while we were editing our slab, as well as the slab we just saved. Since we've saved our slab, we can delete the temporary shapes if we so desire. Now, let's go ahead and add a pipe for our drain. This will serve two functions. One, it'll represent the actual pipe for the drain, and two, we can use it to create the hole in our concrete. We will use the steel beam tool from the steel ribbon to create a vertical beam. We will just use the center point of our slope and snap downwards to 18 inches. 
Having orthographic snapping turned on ensures that you can go perpendicularly straight down. If you do not have it on already, you can press O on your keyboard. Once we've modeled the beam, let's select it and change its name to 6 inch pipe, and then change its profile to standard 6 inch nominal pipe. From here, let's select the pipe and use the contextual toolbar to adjust the position so it's centered on the grips. If you do not see the contextual toolbar, you can turn it on by pressing K on your keyboard. Now that the pipe is in place, we can adjust the height so we extend it just past the top surface of our slab. This will help us get a clean cut in the slab's concrete. We can do so by using direct modification. Select the pipe and click on its vertical dimension. Ensure to click the arrow pointing upwards to apply the change to the top of the pipe and change the dimension by typing 18 and 1 half inches. This will kick the top of the pipe up just a half an inch past the surface of the concrete. Now we just need to go to the edit ribbon, select part cut, select our part to be cut, which is the slab, and then our cutting part, which is the pipe. The tool will complete the process and we now have a hole cut to accommodate our pipe. Now let's slope the slab to a 24 inch square, 2 inch deep sump. Let's start with another 10 foot square, 12 inch deep slab with the class set to 5. Once we've modeled it, convert the part to an item by selecting it and choosing convert part to item from the right click menu. First we need to lay out where our recess is going to be located. We need to ensure that direct modification is on. We'll use the construction lines from the construction object tool in the edit ribbon. We'll go ahead and place the sump 12 inches off the upper right corner of the slab. Place construction lines along the top and right side edges of the slab and then move inward 12 inches using the move command from the right click menu. You can snap to the distance or you can key in the value with your keyboard. Now once they're in place, you need to copy them 24 inches further inward using the copy command from the right click menu. Now that we've laid out where our recess is going to be placed, we need to add some handles to control the surfaces of our slab. Selecting the slab, choose add point from the geometry edit ribbon at the top right. Place a point at the four corners that were created by the intersection of the construction lines. You'll notice as you add point, edges are also created. Once we've placed the four points, we'll see that we have more edges than we actually need. The goal is to have a singular rectangular surface where our recess is located. We need to select the extra edges and then click delete as shown here on the screen. Once those edges have been removed with direct modification still on, we need to select the slab and ensure that the handles button is active from the geometry edit ribbon. Then let's go ahead and grab the surface of our recess or sump and drag it down two inches by either snapping to that distance using direct modification or keying in that distance with our keyboard. This will create the slope from the outer areas towards our sump. Now it's time to save our item and once we do that we can actually add the recess or sump to our slab. To create the sump we need to make a cut two inches deep where it's located. We are going to use the Polygon Cut tool. We can trace the boundary of the sump and then click the middle mouse button to complete. This will cut a square straight through the slab. So we'll need to select that actual dashed cut line and change the profile in the properties pane to BL 4 inches and then change the position depth to 2 inches instead of 6 as shown. And now we have the top face of our slab sloping to our 2 inch deep sump. This concludes our video. Thank you for watching. For more information on the topics discussed in this video or for other topics, make sure to visit our Tecla User Assistance webpage for product guides, support articles, tutorials, and more.